Hi, and welcome to the HTTP Standard Library. In this section, we're going to learn all about the GOES Standard Library and the HTTP package specifically, and how we can use it to process REST API requests and responses. So first, we're going to start off with requests. What is an HTTP request? And how do we use them with the standard library? Then we're going to move on to headers and talk about the purpose of headers and how to include headers in our requests and how to read them from our responses using the standard library. Then in processing content, we're going to go over how to process request and response bodies for REST APIs and how to read in and write out the content of those REST API requests. Then in error handling, we're going to talk about recovering from various types of errors and how to handle errors using the HTTP standard library. Requests. Requests in Go. The Go standard library includes the HTTP package, which is used for sending and receiving requests. You can create a client instance or make simple requests with a default client. So Go comes packaged with an HTTP library. It has an HTTP client, which is primarily what we're going to be using in this course. And it also includes a server component as well. For client transactions with the HTTP package, you can either use the default client that is created for you and make simple requests with that client, which will go through in the coding session, or you can create your own client for more complex requests that you want to make. And we'll go through that as well. So let's get coding. Hi, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the HTTP package and the HTTP package specifically, we're going to go over making requests. And we're going to talk about making requests with some of the shortcut functions like get and post. And we're going to start by making a requests.go file. We're going to put it in the main package. And we're going to create a main function so that we can execute our application and test out the features of the HTTP package. So first we're going to use HTTP get. And we're going to use the HTTP bin.org website in order to test our request and response. So we're going to go to slash get, and that's going to allow us to get back a response. And once we get that response back, we can print it out to the screen so that we can see what was actually sent along in our original request. And this is a library that we're going to be using throughout the rest of this course for NAP and port. So we need to have an idea of how to use it. So now that we have our get function called with the correct URL endpoint, we're then going to assign the request. So now we're going to add variables for request and an error code if there is an error code. So we have our response and error code. We're going to say if error is not equal to nil, then we're going to log a fatal error so that the user is aware that there was an error getting the response back from the server. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the defer keyword and we're going to defer closing of the body on the response that we've received until the end of the scope of the main function, and then the body will be closed. In the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to read out the content of that body. So first we'll defer, and then response, body, close, and then we'll have content, error, and we'll use the IOUtil package, read all on the body, to get back a byte slice of content. And then that byte slice of content, we're going to first check the error code to ensure that we actually did get the content back. And if we don't, we're going to tell the user that we were unable to read the content from the body of the response. And then after we check for the error code, then we're going to use the FMT format package and call print LN. And we're going to print out the content, but we're not going to print out the content directly. We're going to cast it as a string. If we printed it as a byte slice, it's only going to print out the integer values for each of the characters. 
and it'll be indecipherable. So we need to cast it as a string. And we're going to compile our program and run it so that we can see what the response is. And as you can see, we get back a JSON structured document with empty arguments, and we have some headers, some header values for the host, user agent, and different things like that. We've also got the origin, that is where the IP where the request originated from, and the URL that we called, which is httpbin.org slash get. So that's all of the information that's encoded in the response and will allow us to easily test the requests that we make using the HTTP package. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is we're going to move on to using POST. And POST is going to allow us to post a payload by sending a payload in the original request. But before we get there, what we're going to do next is we're going to show you how to supply query arguments to a GET request. So to do that, you're going to add a question mark to the URL, and then you can supply key value pairs, like we have here, search equals something. We're going to build that, and if we look at the output, you can see in the arguments, we now have query arguments. So the search is, is the key, and something is the value to that key. And so we can use those when making get request to APIs, we can send along query parameters, and that's common for searches and different things like that. So now we're going to move on to using the post function. And mind that these are just shortcut functions, and we're going to look at a little bit very soon, we're going to look at how to use a client to process these types of requests for get and post. But for now, we're going to use the post function, and the post function takes one more argument. It takes an interface to an I.O. reader so that it can read out the payload that's going to be sent along in the request to the server. So if we have a payload that we want to send along, we can pass it along, but we need to create a reader first. So we're going to use the strings package, and we also need to supply a MIME type, which is text slash plane in this case, because we're not sending a JSON structured document, otherwise it would be application slash JSON. So now we have our plain text document format, and we're going to use strings.newreader, which allows us to construct a new reader from a string, and we're going to use the string, this is the request content. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build our application, so we're going to get our response back, and that response is going to be processed. We're going to read out the content and print it to the screen, just like we did with the get request. We're going to do the same thing with a post request so that you can see what the post request looks like as well. So go build, and we're going to run our application. And let's look at the response. So now we have a data field, or key, in the JSON structured data, and the value is this is the request content. And so that's the payload that we sent along in our request, and the response has sent it back to us so that we can inspect what it was that we sent in our request. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a client. And in this case, we don't need to configure the client, so we're just going to use the default client. So we're going to assign to the client variable uh, the default client from the HTTP package. And then, instead of using the post function or the get function, we're actually going to use the new request function that will create a new request. So instead of directly returning a response, we're going to return a request, and the request will need to be processed by the client. So we're going to get back a request and an error. We're going to use the HTTP package, and we're going to call the new request function which is going to take the method, the URL, and an IO reader interface. So we're going to pass the method as the uppercase string get, and that means that we want a get request. We're going to pass along the URL, which is just the httpbin.org slash get URL again that we used the first time around. And then we're going to pass nil which is going to be our reader interface because we don't have a request payload. Then we're going to check if the error is nil. If it's not, then we're going to let the user know that we had an error while creating the request. 
So now we're going to call client do and pass the request along so that the client can process the request and return a response to us. And the rest of the code doesn't change because we still need to check for errors, we still need defer close of the body, and we still need to read out the response body content. So now that we've done that, all that's left to do is to build our application one more time, and then we can inspect the response JSON structured data to see if the request was successful. So we build our application, we call requests, and the response data, as you can see, looks consistent with what we saw before when we used the get function. So that's how you can work with the HTTP package for creating requests and getting back responses, and we're going to use it in NAP and PORC throughout the rest of this course.